everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I wanted to do a fun variation of a dyeing project that we all love. I wanted to dye an intact cake of yarn by inserting some of these sweetheart candies within the cake of yarn to give us some really cool gradient sort of splotches of color throughout the yarn. This dry cake of yarn is a hundred grams of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. The yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And we know that this blend of yarn absorbs colors really quickly, so that as we allow these candy hearts to dissolve within this cake, the colors should not spread out too much. But since we have not tried this before, um, even though we have dyed yarn with these candy hearts, we don't know entirely what to expect until we try it. In this dye bath, I have approximately eight cups of water, and I'm going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar as the acid source for us to dye our yarn. Now I'm going to let this bath heat up while we go insert these candy hearts into our yarn cake. These candy hearts are a really, really vibrantly colored rainbow of color. And as such, I sort of want to try to do a rainbow gradient as I am inserting these candies around the skein of yarn. I know from experience that the broken candies still have color all the way through. So I think that we can get something that is really, really pretty. Now I'm just sort of random. Okay. And there's that first one. I'm going to flip this over before I start doing the blues a little bit more on the inside. I'm not expecting these colors to spread out very far at all. Um, I think that the colors will remain pretty local, but again, I am really, really curious how this might turn out. There we go. And we could certainly be more random with where we're inserting them. I'm sort of inserting them all along a similar plane, but I am hoping for some kind of overall gradient. I'm also curious about the colors that might spread, uh, spread around a bit more. But oh, I guess with the green, I should be careful where I place this last one because I don't have as much green as the other colors. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now these hearts contain a mixture of red number three, yellow number five, yellow number six, blue number one, and then last red number 40. So there are a lot of the food coloring colors that we know really well and that know work really well um, that are, are present. So we should get some really nice colors. As we start getting towards the center, it's a little harder to insert these candies. And then hopefully I can get some of these pinks in the full on center. But depending on how this is looking, I just sort of want to add some more purples around the outside since I have them. And then the same thing with some of the blues. Um, I'll flip this and add some more blues in this sort of middle type region. There will probably be a lot of white left over, but if you don't aren't happy with the saturation of color, you could always add after the fact, over dye this with some food coloring. Let's add another pink there. And yeah, I guess we've got a lot of other extra colors around, but I think that this is something that will be really fun. So now we just need to wait for our dye bath to heat up and we'll try to submerge the yarn and see what we get. We are right below a simmer. And so I am now going to submerge our cake of yarn. Set it on the top. 
can use my tongs to slowly help it submerge. And I am going to reduce, whoops, we got a little stuck. I'm going to reduce the heat because, well, we see it bubbling a bit. Gee, what's in that candy? But where is, where's my lid? I can see some hints of some of the colors, which excites me. Um, yeah, some, some of the colors poking through. But I do want to place a lid on this. And so I'll check back in in 10 minutes. After 10 minutes in the pot, you can see that we have colors spreading out quite nicely. Um, there is a lot of purple that I see around the outside, and look at the bright pink in the middle. I'm starting to see some blues pop up, and I don't know, I'm curious about how much the colors have dissolved and how much of the solid hearts are still present in here. But I know that I want to let this cook for at least 20 more minutes. If I notice anything that's really visible from this end, then I'll pop back in to show you. Otherwise, I'll be back in 20 minutes. It has been a total of 30 minutes, and we haven't really seen a lot of change outwardly on this yarn cake so far. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat, but I want to leave the cake in the dye pot. And that's because I don't know if all of our candy hearts have dissolved yet, but I sort of want to give things some time to sort of percolate in here, if you will. Um, taking a, a peek, I do see some blues coming through down there, so I think we could end up with some, I think I've described some of this as sort of a unicorn's breath in the past, but I'm really curious how much of a gradient we'll get with these colors. So anyway, I'm going to let it cool and then I'll be back. The yarn has cooled completely in the pot. And look at how translucent that water is. That's because there's all the sugar and everything in there. So I'm trying to not manipulate things too much, but I am squeezing out a lot of this sugary water and I'm gonna transfer this whole cake into a bath of warm water. But look at some of these intense colors that we see. Normally when I do cake dyeing, I will uh, transfer the, the yarn onto a plate and let it dry a little bit before I unravel it. But I sort of want to get some of the sugars and stuff to soak out of the yarn. So I think I'm going to rinse it sort of like this a handful of times, just in, in some water and then we'll try to squeeze it out. I have rinsed this cake of yarn multiple times. And now I decided, I thought that I would actually try, ooh, look at those colors. I thought that I might try to um, unwind this tonight, but I'm not going to be able to. So I am actually going to remove it from the, the water, and I'll go back and squeeze out a bit more water from this, but let it sort of dry a bit. I just finished squeezing out the bit more water. The rinse water is still sort of cloudy, so this yarn will definitely need a fair amount of washing after we, we wind it onto the Nitty Naughty. But check out some of these intense, intense colors that we have on the inside. I'm curious, Ooh, those greens. This is awesome. I think that we're going to have some awesome pastels. Like, I mean, we can see this pastel purple on the outside but also really vibrant colors, and it'll be really, really beautiful. But it's a lovely snow day morning, and I am now going to unwind this onto a Nitty Naughty. I want to get this yarn rinsed as fast as possible, so it really needs to get unwound. It's a bit hard to tell, but there might be some breaking around some of these purple hearts. I do see some hints of pink and blue around those pink splotches, but um, maybe, ooh, and maybe there's a bit of red within the, the blue one. Oh, maybe from the text. 
That would be pretty cool. But, you know, each, each uh, heart does not necessarily give a super, super solid color. Check out those awesome dots of color around the ball as we are in the middle of the blue section. Here is the amazing rainbow gradient we got from dyeing a cake of yarn with these candy hearts. The Once we start getting into the yellow, orange, and pink sections, the gradient isn't quite as clean. There was some orange at the beginning of the yellow, but overall, this is absolutely spectacular. But it still needs some washing. So what I am going to do now is I am going to use some cotton ties and tie off the skein in multiple places to keep it from getting tangled. And then I will come back and we'll start washing. I t normally don't bother tying off my skeins in so many places. But since I still know this one needs a bit of washing because we weren't really able to wash the interior, I thought it was prudent to protect the skein of yarn a bit more for the washing process. After a short rinse, you can see that the water is starting to take this translucent sort of quality to it. The there's some stuff in here still. It's not some of the sticky candy stuff. I guess it's still in the yarn. But all of the color is staying put. So now we can use some clear dish soap. Actually, we're about at the end of this bottle. So I'm going to rinse it out a bit. And the soap should help us as we want to remove anything icky, sticky from the yarn. Um, you do want to use cooler water, not hot, for the rinses because you could, warm water can dislodge acid dyes. But anyway, I am going to keep rinsing this a few more times to get as much as I can out of the yarn, then we will hang it up to dry. Sometimes pushing the envelope really pays off. And today we have a fantastic speckled, splotched, pastel, bright gradient that we created by dyeing a cake of yarn with candy hearts inserted on the inside. It's pretty amazing when you consider how quickly these colors struck to the yarn, but also how overall we have this yarn that feels like a breath of fresh air after a storm. Twisting up the yarn doesn't really do the amazing rainbow gradient justice, but this yarn is just asking to become some kind of shawl or even mismatched socks or something really, really fun. I think it's a shame that these candy hearts are only available one time a year because their potential for creating these really beautiful colors is fantastic and I really cannot wait to explore more ways to use these awesome candy hearts. Don't worry, I stocked up after Valentine's Day. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed what you saw here today, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I like to be creative and choose many different ways to try to apply color to yarn and I release new dyeing videos every single week. You don't want to miss any of them. Thank you for watching.